Hey y'all, it's your realtor Brooke. How many times have you written an offer on a house and you didn't win? Someone else beat you. Well today I'm going to reveal 10 things that you can do to make your offer the winning offer the very first time. Stay tuned. is price, but not just any price. It doesn't have to be based on the listing price that's in the MLS. It needs to be based on the research that your buyer agent has done. You need to make sure your offer price is realistic. You need to make sure your offer price is fair. And you also need to make sure your offer price is reasonable. In the end, if you're purchasing with a loan, the house is going to have to appraise for your offer price. So make sure it's realistic, make sure it's relevant, and make sure it makes sense. That is the first thing. Number two, closing cost assistance. These days it's been part of our culture that buyers are asking sellers to credit them some money at closing to cover the buyer's closing costs. Well, what that actually does from a seller perspective is it lowers their net proceeds from the sale. So the closer you can get your closing cost assistance to zero, the better. Another offer may have a higher sales price, but because they're asking for more in closing cost assistance, to the seller, it's like that other offer has less money on the table for the seller. So making sure your closing costs are as close to zero as absolutely possible. That will help you win. Number three, make sure you submit a pre-qualification lender letter with your offer. I can't tell you how many times I see buyer agents forgetting to include that in their offer. And that sends a very not good message to the seller or to their other agent. But make sure your letter says that you are obviously qualified to purchase the home at the price that you're offering. But it also needs to come from a reputable lender. A reputable lender may not be known by the seller. So for instance, they may not know that XYZ lending company is really bad. But I'll tell you this, if their agent has been in the business long enough, they will know which companies are reputable, which companies are not. And that agent will advise their seller to accept your offer or not, sometimes based on who that lender letter is written by. So make sure your lender letter is strong. Make sure it's written by a reputable lender that someone knows about. It's not just some random online company that started last week. Make sure it's strong and make sure it's included with your offer right from the beginning. Number four, make sure your offer is friendly. Don't include a ton of demands for things that your buyer may want. So for instance, if they really love the furniture in the house, Maybe find out if the furniture is up for negotiation before you start including some of the family heirlooms in your offer. You don't want to include things in your offer that might offend a seller, make them feel uncomfortable, or make them feel confused. Make it as clean, friendly, and simple as possible. That's number four. Number five, put your best foot forward. And this actually goes along with making a friendly offer. So putting your best foot forward means that you only get one chance to make a very first impression. So don't blow it by making a low ball offer and wanting the seller to counter offer back. If you're in a multiple offer situation, your low ball offer is gonna go off to the side and not even gonna be considered. They will work with the stronger offers right from the very beginning. And also in putting your best foot forward, I think it's important for your agent to ask the listing agent this question. What, other than price, is most important to the seller. You'd be surprised by what some of the answers are. It might be that they need a closing in three weeks. It might be that they need a closing in two months. It might be that they really need to keep the playground. And so any offer that comes in asking for the playground to be removed is something that they can consider. So putting your best foot forward is extremely important. Number six, make a sizable earnest money deposit 
with your offer. And when I say sizable, I mean, if you were to not buy that home and you were in default, losing that money would hurt you. You need to demonstrate to the seller how serious you are about purchasing the home. A $500 earnest money deposit, it's not gonna cut it. The larger the deposit, the more serious you appear to this seller. So make sure your deposit is reasonable, but quite large at the same time. Number seven, cash always talks. If you have the ability to buy the home without a loan, that is gonna speak volumes to a seller. In my experience, I've seen sellers accept lower offers because the offer is cash compared to offers with mortgages. Mortgages take a little bit longer to close and there can be lots of hiccups along the way. I mean, there's another party involved here, a lending institution. But if all the buyer has to do is go to the bank and wire the money to get it closed, that will more than likely always win. So cash will talk. Number eight, shorten your contingency periods. Now there are some contingencies that the federal law requires X number of days for you to do, or a state law doesn't allow you to waive how many days you have for things like property owner disclosure or lead paint disclosure or things like that. But the other contingencies that you do have control over, maybe consider shortening the amount of time that those contingencies are out there. That will give the seller a sense that everything is clear and ready to go sooner in the process. Some sellers worry, what happens if we get to the 30 day mark and these contingencies are still outstanding? Is this gonna be good to go? Should I move? What's happening? So shortening some contingency expiration dates and deadlines is a good strategy to get your offer more on the winning edge. Number nine, write the seller a letter. Write them a letter about what you love about the home. Write them a letter about why you decided to make an offer on their home first. Write them a letter and tell them how you want to live in the home. Now, one thing you need to be careful of is there could be some fair housing things here. So be careful about including a photo of your family. Be careful about mentioning ages and names of children and all this kind of stuff. But share with them the lifestyle, share them the vision of how you see yourself living in the home. Going back to number five, putting your best foot forward and asking that question about what other than price is the seller interested in, I think sometimes a seller will say they want a certain person to live a certain lifestyle in the home. They raise their children in the home. They would love to see another family do that. Now we'll go over fair housing at another time and whether or not this applies, but writing a letter could put your best foot forward and it also shows that you are really serious about the home. For heaven's sakes, you took the time to write a letter to the sellers. That is a great idea. And finally, number 10, I think this is the absolute most important piece. You need to make sure you've hired the right buyer agent to represent you. Number one, you need your own buyer agent not the listing agent acting as a dual agent. You need your own representation to make sure you are advised correctly and your offer is written in a very competitive manner. A couple of the qualities to look for to make sure you have the right buyer agent. Number one, that buyer agent knows their stuff. They know what the market is. They know what's going on in the market. They actively are selling and buying and representing buyers and sellers and landlords and all that kind of stuff in the area you're looking at. One of the phenomenons of the area that I'm in is there's lots of overlap of agents from a totally different jurisdiction coming down trying to represent buyers in our area. And I'll tell you this, the culture in our real estate area is very different than the culture in that real estate area. So having an agent that works in the area that knows the market is number one. Number two, the agent needs to have a professional reputation, not only among other consumers, and more than likely you found this agent from referral, but they also need to have a very good reputation and a very good rapport with the other agents in the area. I can't tell you how many times I've submitted an offer, multiple offer situation, but because the listing agent and I had a strong professional relationship, they knew if Brooke Miller wrote the offer, those buyers are closing and their 
there's not going to be a lot of problems and we're going to make it through and it's going to be professionally done and on time and all those things, that offer from me will beat out another offer that might even be a higher price. So making sure your agent has an excellent rapport with the other agents in the area is extremely important. And finally, making sure your agent has a great relationship with the lender that you're going to use. The lender, the buyer, and the agent. The three of you are the three amigos through this whole process. And then make sure that they have a great relationship with your lender and that communication is seamless between the three of you. Extremely important throughout the whole thing. For nearly two decades, my team and I have been helping our clients write winning offers day in and day out. We've done this in seller's markets. We've done this in buyer's markets. We've done this in foreclosure markets. We've done this on short sales. We've done this on bank owned homes. We've done this at auctions. We've done everything. So if you are interested in purchasing a home and want to make sure you have an agent that's going to make sure your offer is winning, click the link below, fill out a buyer profile, we will be in touch and we will take care of you. And if you are not in the market right now to buy a home, but you know of somebody who is, feel free to share this video with them. If someone that you work with has been losing out on every single offer they've been writing, share this video with them. Hopefully it will help them out. If they choose to give us a call to work with us, great. If they choose to use this advice and writing their offer with their other, with their agent, great. I wanna make sure people feel comfortable and don't resent making offers on homes and sticking to renting a home when they really want to own a home. I just don't want people to give up. So if you know of someone who's in that situation, share this video with them, click the link below, send them a link to our website and we will make sure to take care of them. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Hey you, don't forget to click the subscribe button right here to keep all this great information coming to you. And if you wanna know more about the services we provide here in the great Commonwealth of Virginia, click the link to our website, go fill out a seller or a buyer profile, and we will get in touch and help you out as soon as we can. Have a great time, don't forget, Subscribe.